everyone, welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. The other day I was direct messaged on Instagram and was asked if I would be willing to review a new gouache product that came on the market recently. This gouache is by a company, I said okay that I would do it. The, the gouache is by a company that I'm not familiar with. Uh, the name is Gis Finest and it came fairly quickly. It came today, I wasn't expecting it, and I just told them okay about three or four days ago. So it must be in the US, but, well, hello, baby. Um, this is the company, G's Finest, and it looks like they've sent me 24 18 ml tubes of gouache. Now I asked them about the quality of the product. Is it a craft product? Is it an artist quality product? Is it a student grade artist product? And they didn't seem to understand my question, which gives me pause. Okay, now before you leave me a bad comment, because I know I will get them for that statement, I just want you to know, these are just my initial views before I touch the paint. So stay tuned for the whole video to hear my full review. I'm thinking it's more of a craft product, and here's why. When I opened this up, and I did see it on their advertisement, I went and checked out their reviews on Amazon, and Amazon had really good reviews <clears throat> on the product. I'm not sure what the people were using them for, though. Um, but the, the reason I'm thinking it's more of a craft paint is because of the packaging. You see here, well, it's in a closed package, so that's not the problem, but right here, all of these tubes are clear, and they kind of um, state that as a positive thing. But when you think about light fastness on paint, the last thing you want for artist quality paint is to have clear tubes where your light fastness changes before you even get a chance to use it. So, um, I'm not sure if I have light fastness on these products. So let's just go ahead, we're gonna dig in and we're gonna see what these products are like. I'm gonna swatch them and show you the swatches. Off camera, I'll swatch, swatch them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to do a painting with them. These are very bright colors, so it looks like I'm gonna have a lot of mixing to do. But this is the packaging. You can find them on Amazon. You can also find them at www. And I'll put it down here. www.geesfinest.com. They have a telephone number that is out of the country. Uh, oh, it's from Auckland, New Zealand. That's where it's coming from. Wow, that came fast. I wonder if they have somebody in the U.S. that... Um, is a distributor for them. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and swatch all 24 colors and then we're going to take a look at them. Okay, I had a chance to look at these tubes a little bit and they do have an opacity and light fastness rating on them. <clears throat> Looks like they give dots. This one has three dots for light fastness. This one has three. Let me think of something that might not. Let me look at one of the yellows. Three, three. What about a purple? The mauve should be lower. Three. They're giving everything three? Well, that's interesting. Oh, this one has two. Here we go. This one is crimson. And it has a light fastness of two. So it's not a permanent alizarin crimson. It's just a crimson. Um, the opacity it has, um, it looks like it. this means opaque when it's filled in white. I wonder if the key is on the box here. I've been run into this before. And since it is uh, from New Zealand, I'm thinking that their, their light fast ratings, the more the dots, the more light fastness. Okay, here it is. Three stars, or three dots is excellent. Two is very good and one is good. That's kind of a silly way to do it. I would say good, fair, and poor is what I would think. But if none of theirs are poor, then okie dokie. But that's not normally how people list their opacities, or their light fastness. This uh, opacity, opaque is black. 
Transparent is white. Semi-transparent has a line through it and semi-opaque is half black, half white. So the transparent is white, but then it's on a black on a black thing. So I'm wondering if it's the opposite. I've run into this before, but on the others, the square was painted the opposite color and then it was filled in with the same color as the ribbon around the tube. So I'm going to assume that all these white squares mean opaque, not transparent. But when you look at the key, it says transparent for a white box. So it's kind of silly. They do give the pigment numbers as well, which is really nice. These are all things for artist quality products. So maybe these are artist quality. It says premium gouache paint, but anybody can can claim that. It says here, we stand behind the quality of our products. However, if you've received a damage, faulty, or incorrect item, please contact us for avail available options. It's manufactured in China, but designed in New Zealand. So I'm going to go ahead with my swatches now, and then I'll be back. Okay, well I've got everything done except for the whites and I'm gonna do those on camera. But I will go through all of these. That first one was, they called cobalt blue, but it's, to me it looks more like a lavender color. It's very, very um, light. And I'm gonna get you on camera here so you can see all these colors. That one they say is opaque, which it is, and it gets excellent light fast rating. That one looked a little bit chalky to me, but um, then this one is cerulean blue. Also excellent light fastness and opacity. The next one is ultramarine. That's a good ultramarine, PB29. It is also excellent light fastness and opacity, good opacity. This one's Prussian blue. Um, very similar to phthalo blue. My brain just fell out. Uh, so that would be PB15, they have good opacity and excellent light fastness. Now the Burnt Sienna, I had a problem with some of these having some, the binding was um, a little liquidy at the top and basically all you have to do with that, that doesn't mean anything is bad, it's just that it needs to be mixed together. So the Burnt Sienna, I didn't get a good good look at. Um, it's supposed to be opaque and it's also got excellent light fastness. The next one here is um, Burnt Umber and it's the same excellent light fastness and opacity. Um, the next one is Gray, excellent light fastness and opacity and this one is black and the same thing. Uh, this next one is Crimson and that has good light fastness and opacity. And this one is vermilion, and that one also is two dots or good opacity. The next one is rose, excellent light fastness and opacity. And the next one is mauve with excellent light fastness. And the next one is pale green, excellent light fastness. And this one is sap green. I'm going to just say they're all excellent unless I say otherwise. Uh, this one is deep green, and then you have viridian, which uh, I can't see here yet. Okay, then on the last column we have yellow pale, then we have yellow lemon yellow, then we have mid yellow. These two look so similar. Then we have yellow ochre. This one is called flesh tint. I hate when they do that. Not everybody looks this way. I don't even look that way. Um, I guess it's a good base mixture for mixing flesh tints, but I would say it's more of a peach. And then this one was scarlet. So they all have excellent light fastness except for scarlet. The reds are a little bit lower. They are considered good. Now, looking at these, um, to me, they... I don't know if they look a bit chalky or not. 
Um, I can't really tell, but I'm going to go ahead with the whites now and just see how well the whites mix. We have regular white and then we have titanium white. I'm not sure if regular white is zinc based. Let's see if it says here. No, it doesn't say. Um, and they're both PW6. So this one's titanium, which is usually more opaque. This one says it's opaque. This one says it's opaque. So I'm going to go ahead and mix these with a little bit of gouache and see, see how they do. I'm going to grab some of this green. I'm going to mix on the paper, I think. This green, and then I'm going to add the regular white to it. And it mixes very well, as you can see. It mixes very well. And now I'm going to take the same color. And I'm going to use the titanium white. You can see already how much more opaque it is. This has a little yellower hue to it, I think, also. But now I'm going to take some of this titanium white and I'm going to draw a line across this dried paint and we'll see how it does. Looks good so far. Now, I should have made these lines a little thicker over here. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this other white. And we'll see how they look side by side. Maybe they're the same and we just don't know it. Ugh, I'm getting green on my hand. Okay, I'm going to let those dry and then we will compare them. Well, it's really hard to say. I'd say they look pretty similar across the board. Um, the top is titanium, the bottom is white. So... I'm not sure what the difference is there. Anyway, so that's that. Now I'm going to go ahead, we'll flip this over, and I will do a painting for you.
So my initial feelings about this gouache are surprisingly positive. I did not think this gouache was going to be any good. And I made an assumption because I thought it looked crafty, you know. Uh, they claim the light fastness is good to excellent quality. And if that's the case, then this is artist quality gouache. Um, only a, a light fast test would tell. And those light fast tests aren't real accurate. You really need time and um, hanging a painting where you would normally hang it, not right in a window. As far as working with these paints go, they're creamy. They're very buttery. Um, they harden fairly quickly on the palette and they are reconstitutable very easily, of course, like any gouache would be. But um, <clears throat> I'm very pleased with them. The opacity is great. 
Um, I didn't use any white this time. I hope it shows you just how this gouache works. I kind of slopped on the back. I should have had that wet and put the trees in wet, but um, the distant trees. But anyway, uh, there's my picture to show you. And yeah, this gouache is inexpensive. And a correction here. It does it does conform to ASTM standards, so the, the light fastness is correct on this chart. And of them all, there were only two that were two dots rather than three, so that's pretty darn good. Um, and as far as the cost of this paint, you can get it on Amazon. This set of the 24 colors, which is plenty, uh, non-toxic professional quality paint. Uh, it says it's set for the student, the professional, the beginner, or hobby painters. It is $27.99. So for four, 24 colors, that that's just barely over a dollar a tube. So you can't get that anywhere. You know, if you're starting out, I would re recommend this gouache. It's really, it mixes well. The colors blend well. Everything about it went well. So um, I will post a link in the description. And if you have questions about my brushes that I used, I was using the Princeton King Art Precision. I'm not, I'm sorry, not Princeton. Premium Precision King Art. And also the Premium Original Gold King Art brushes were what I used. And then I did use my uh, quarter inch flat silver black velvet for a portion and then this is a king art brush that is unlabeled that was a throw-in that they gave me so um if you want more information about these brushes you can go to my previous video and i talk about all of these brushes and the links are there for you so everybody remember be courageous paint with wild abandon but most of all be kind to each other take care